1825, it was widely believed that the human body would not withstand travel at the extraordinary speed of 30 miles per hour, a pace faster than a galloping horse. Surely, it was assumed by medical professionals at the time, passengers would simply melt at such a sustained speed. What's more, the train's acceleration would be enough to cause female passengers' uteruses to fly out of their bodies. So when the Stockton-Darlington Railway set out upon its maiden adventure that year, people feared the worst. As it turned out, happily enough, the railroads did not become littered with either melted carcasses or flying uteruses. Fast forward 75 years, and we find the introduction of an even more radical development, automatic elevators. And again, people were terrified of the things. They simply refused to ride in a car without an operator at the helm. To help assuage nervous riders, a soothing voice piped into the car greeted them as they entered. This is an automatic elevator, intoned the disembodied host. Please press the button for the floor you desire. If you can put yourself in the shoes of this circa 1900 urbanite, perhaps you can imagine why it would take nearly 50 years, nudged along by an elevator operator's strike in 1945, before the public would come to trust and accept this new mode of transport. Now, of course, the idea of an elevator operator is a quaint throwback. It seems mankind has always had an uneasy relationship with new technology. Even the introduction of streetlights was cause for concern. Upon their introduction, a 19th century German newspaper actually detailed six grave consequences for any township that dared install them. So today, when three-quarters of people surveyed worldwide expressed serious misgivings about the safety of fully autonomous vehicles, can we blame them? Trains, automatic elevators, streetlights, and now self-driving cars. Technology changes, but human nature apparently does not. Nevertheless, just as we did with trains, elevators, and streetlights, we'll get past any skepticism about the safety of self-driving cars. And when we inevitably do, the very idea of a steering wheel will be happily relegated to the dustbin of history right along with buggy whips and elevator operators. This, of course, begs the question about what else we might expect 10 or 20 years down the road. Aside from sparing anxious parents the prospect of driver's education for their kids, yes, this rite of passage will also pass with self-driving cars. On the very near horizon, for example, we can already see machine intelligence approximating that of humans in many respects. What will it mean, then, when we are able to achieve true man-machine symbiosis, where our mental and physical capacities are enhanced in no small way by AI, and our human sensibilities remain? Will we forever feel like Spock and Bones trapped together inside the same body? Indeed, the very nature of our identity will come into question with such man-machine mergers. But there is no question that as we eventually come to transcend our biological roots, these technologies will also make us better, faster, stronger, and, to take the six million dollar man one step further, smarter too. Moreover, at the rate that exponential technologies are driving costs down, going bionic won't cost anywhere near six million dollars. The term bionic coined 60 years ago, is a portmanteau of the words biology and electronic. In the decades since, we've witnessed a great many examples of bionics at work, from artificial limbs and organs to eye, ear, and brain implants. But the things that will contribute to making us better, faster, stronger, and smarter will also be decidedly organic, as we'll also be able to replace and enhance via 3D printing, CRISPR, and other biotechnologies, diseased, damaged, or tired organs, a development that may have many marketers rethinking the concept of the lifetime guarantee. In the very near future, we'll be making stronger, more resilient humans with the help of high-performance prosthetics, as well as through the grafting of smart skin, muscle tissues grown in bioreactors, and entire chains of foreign DNA into our own, 
We'll be inventing ways that help us to learn faster, both naturally and via electronic neural stimulation. We'll improve our senses of sight, hearing, and touch by augmenting our organic capacities with a combination of genetic editing and myriad sensors placed in and on our bodies. Enabling razor-sharp acuity, as well as the continuous monitoring of all our vital statistics. We'll travel at speeds of 700 miles per hour without getting airborne, or melting, and also be able to appear instantly anywhere holographically. And our cars, if there will still be such a thing as private car ownership, definitely won't have steering wheels. As wild as some of these things seem to our current sensibilities, they are actually all here now, or are on the very near horizon. Indeed, as they said when they rebuilt Steve Austin, the six million dollar man, we have the technology. And when this exponentially advancing technology is scaled across a critical mass of humanity through the work of creative entrepreneurs, the world will be irreversibly altered.